Season 5 of Cobra Kai was arguably the best yet. It went straight to number 1 when it came out. We saw old and new characters going through many twists and turns until the season finale where everything came down to one or more final fights. But surprisingly, the least shocking parts of the season were the karate fights. This video will discuss 10 shockers from Cobra Kai Season 5. First off, when Carmen got pregnant. With a rival karate dojo, trouble with teenagers, and one sensei after another after them, these characters have a lot of bad luck. Early in the season, Johnny got some unexpected but happy news. When Carmen finally told Johnny she was pregnant after a few bouts of morning sickness that everyone but Johnny seemed to notice, Johnny went into full dad-say mode. He baby-proofed his apartment, put up child-appropriate art, and even learned how to swaddle his case of beer. But the best thing about having a baby on the way was that it gave Johnny the strength to fight Silver's minions in a fight to the death. Still, some people believe a baby feels like a plot device that isn't necessary. A plot point that happens in a lot of shows is when the family grows. Unlike many shows, the Netflix hit doesn't have a hard time coming up with ideas, which is why a TV baby is usually used. Up next, Miguel and Robbie making up. Miguel and Robbie have always been fierce rivals. At the end of the first season of Cobra Kai, Miguel won the All Valley Tournament by beating Robbie. But they fought again at the end of season two, and Robbie almost killed Miguel when he kicked him off a balcony during a fight at the high school. In seasons three and four, this event only made it clear that the boys were enemies. It seemed like these two boys would never be friends. Whether it was Robbie's jealousy that Johnny was getting close to another boy, or Miguel's anger that Robbie's fighting left him temporarily paralyzed, or even the fact that they fought over Sam and Tori, it seemed they'd never get along. But just like Daniel and Johnny, these enemies talked and made up right before they discovered they'd be big brothers. Their new friendship surprised their friends, but it helped them stop a fight between Sam and Tori. It also helped them fight off the Cobra Kai's when they tried to take down the dojo one last time followed by Tori became a traitor. In the last episode of Season 4, Tori proudly held her All-Valley trophy until she overheard Silver's plans to ensure Cobra Kai won the tournament by getting the ref to make sure of it. Tori's feelings have been all over the place since she learned she didn't win pretty. Until the end of Season 5, you won't know which side she's on. At first, it turns out that Tori's doing a job from the inside for Kreese, who's trying to get back at Silver while he's in jail. But when Kreese tells her that the mission is over, Tori takes matters into her own hands and tells Sam that Silver lied. In the season finale, everything comes to a head when Tori helps the Miyagi-Do students break into Cobra Kai and steal some incriminating security footage. Her betrayal of the Cobras doesn't go over well with her former classmates. Moving on to Miguel's disappointing father plot. Over the last few seasons, the mystery about Miguel's father has slowly been building up. Cobra Kai has grown to have many characters and plot lines that all connect, but it all started with the story of Johnny Lawrence and Miguel Diaz. Miguel's always been the most critical part of Cobra Kai, and since the first episode, we've been wondering who his father could be. When he left the All Valley and took a bus to Mexico to look for his birth father in the last episode of Season 4, this was the first time his secret finally came to light. At the start of Season 5, Miguel is in Mexico, and Johnny and Robbie are on their way to find him. He asks for Hector Salazar without success until he accidentally runs into him and his family. Hector invites Miguel to dinner after he saves their young son from being hit by a car. Miguel accepts without ever saying who he is. But when he finds out that Hector pretends to be a businessman while committing crimes, he's disappointed and ends up going home with Johnny. This is a disappointing end to an exciting storyline for only two episodes. Next, Mike Barnes' store caught on fire. This season, soap opera star Sean Kanan made a long-awaited return to the franchise. He played the bad guy, Mike Barnes, in The Karate Kid 3. That's before he played AJ Quartermain in General Hospital or the notorious Deacon Sharp on The Bull and the beautiful. Mike's return gave him and his old rival Daniel a chance to catch up, especially when Mike told Daniel that he had stopped doing karate and started running a furniture store. But when Daniel gets what he needs from Mike and Silver finds out that his old student has betrayed him, the sensei puts a hit on Mike's furniture store. When Mike gets to work, all of his hard work is on fire. Not to mention what happens to Kreese. Kreese spends almost the entire season in prison, where his fellow inmates know and respect him as a sensei. But when Johnny and Daniel decide that the former former Cobra is the only way to stop Silver, they surprise him by going to see him. After some back and forth, they make a deal. Daniel will get his lawyer to help Kreese, and Kreese will tell Daniel what Silver has planned. After Kreese tells Johnny everything he knows about Silver, he and Johnny have a not-so-heartfelt talk while Daniel calls his lawyer. But when Daniel returns and gives Kreese a piece of paper that he says has his lawyer's number, Kreese turns it over to find no mercy, mother 
paper written on it before he and Johnny leave the prison. This was one of the season's most shocking and funny moments. Let's learn more about when Mike took over the limo. After Silver sets fire to Mike's furniture store, the character doesn't show up again for the rest of the season. Instead, Daniel, Johnny, and Chosen work together to eliminate the bad sensei. When the three men get in their party limo after a night of drinking and dancing, the car starts to zigzag, throwing the three men around the back until it finally stops in the woods. We could only think that this was Silver's plan, so it was even more shocking when the driver turned out to be an angry Mike Barnes. Mike complains about his store and his family and says Daniel ruined his life. He almost fights with Johnny, but they agree that they hate Silver. Coming up, the fight with the Miyagi-Do students. If you think about it, this character's betrayal shouldn't come as much of a surprise since he's been called that name for five seasons. But when Miyagi-Do faced off against Cobra Kai, it did. When the Cobras get to the dojo and find that the Miyagi-Do students have broken in, the two rival dojos get ready for battle, but not before one member switches sides. Kyler tells Mitch, come on, get your rear end over here where it belongs. He then walks over to where the other students are standing and unzips his hoodie to show the Cobra Kai symbol on his shirt. Next, when Daniel and Silver had it out on the mat. In the season 5 finale, Daniel and Silver finally fought on the Cobra Kai mat after more than 30 years. And when Daniel wins the fight by using Silver's tricks against him, Silver's students act in a way no one expected. Instead of standing by their sensei after he loses to Daniel and finds out he cheated at the All Valley, that is when each Cobra Kai student walks over to where Silver's lying on the floor and throws their Cobra Kai shirts at him to let him know that they're done with the dojo. Finally, when Kreese made a comeback. At the start of the Season 5 finale, Kreese fights with two other inmates, gets stabbed several times, and bleeds on the floor. Kreese isn't seen again until the end of the episode when his bloody, unconscious body is brought into the prison hospital on a gurney. When the doctor looks at Kreese's wound, he thinks he's dead, but it turns out that the blood on his clothes is red jello. Kreese's eyes open and he jumps off the gurney to kill the prison guards. When the doctor begs for mercy, it's unclear if Kreese gives it or not because the next time we see him, he's wearing the doctor's coat and walking down the prison hall. Then he opens the door and runs away, ready to get revenge. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. Which of these moments was the most shocking for you? Did you expect Kreese to make a comeback? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you at the next one.